What's going on guys? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Amigos Code. In this course, I'm going to teach you about Git and GitHub. If you are starting out your career as a software engineer and never heard about Git and GitHub, then let me tell you that you as a software engineer, Git is something that you must know how to use. Like literally, you must know how to use. So Git is a version control system that allows one or more people to work on the same code base, on the same project. For example, you and I, we could be working on the same project. I can see your changes. You can see my changes. We can work on the same file. If we have some conflicts, we can resolve the conflicts. And basically, we have the history of the entire project as we build an application. And then we have GitHub, which is the hosting platform that allows us to host our projects somewhere on the cloud, right? So the most popular hosting provider for uh, Git projects is GitHub, but we also have Bitbucket, GitLab, CodeCommit, and many others. In this course, we're going to start from the beginning, understanding exactly how Git works, then we're going to touch upon commits, working with branches, creating pull requests, resolving conflicts, merging to master, and then understand exactly how to use GitHub. So GitHub is so nice. Uh, it was actually recently uh, bought by Microsoft and they're doing an amazing job in terms of bringing out awesome features as you'll see throughout this course. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe also, comment down below and let me know what is your level when it comes to use Git, right? Are you an intermediate or a beginner or expert? So let me know whether you are an expert or not, or maybe you've never heard about Git and GitHub. So comment down below. So this course is actually also available on my website. If you want to gain a certificate, I highly recommend you to take the exact same course, but on my website. Without further ado, let's kick off this course. I always tell my students to practice as I teach so that that's the best way that you are going to learn and gain the most out of this course. If there is anything that you don't understand, please do let me know. Literally, let me know. And the easiest way for you to get in touch is by joining the community, both private Facebook group as well as Discord. So we are over 15,000 people combined already. The community is huge and basically everyone is there learning how to code and everybody's super helpful. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post them on a group and we will help you. Also, you can email me at hello at amigos.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Catch you in the next one. Let's understand how Git works. So usually when we write software, we kind of have our working directory, and this is where we have a bunch of files. Maybe we have a CSS file, JavaScript containing some React code, some HTML, and pretty much you could have any other uh, file extension within your project, depending on um, the application that you are building. Now with Git, we have the staging area, and we also have the commit history. Now, the way it works, let's say that we want to take the HTML file and then we want to represent that as a commit. Well, the first thing that we have to do is to issue a command called git add. So I'm gonna show you git add in a second, but here this is simplified and it's not actually HTML, but HTML there represents to the actual file that you see there, right? So I'm just saying git add. Now before the file makes its way to the commit history, it must go through the staging area. And then once we are ready to commit the changes, we say git commit, and then it goes from the staging area to the commit history. So basically, this now represents the snapshot of our changes. So obviously we could actually take, for example, the, the JavaScript file and the CSS file as well, and then issue the git add command, 
go through the staging area and then have another commit. Now with commits, we can have a bunch of commits. So a commit is simply a save point. So let's say that you have an application and you wrote a screen, you can say, right, so this is working. Now I'm going to commit that change. Then you add a button and then you make that button. When you click on the button, maybe you want to get some data. Then you say, right, so this functionality now works. Let me actually create another commit. And then maybe uh, you change the CSS file. So you've added some animations so on and so forth. It works. And then you say, right, so now let me also commit that change. So a commit is simply a save point. Now, all of this is actually happening within our local machine. So we've taken some CSS files on some JavaScript. We added to the staging area by issuing the git add, and then we committed those changes. But all of this is happening in our local machine. Now, the problem here is if our computer dies, if our computer dies, let's say that, for example, um, the computer is not starting up, right? So now you've lost all of those changes. Well, what we need actually is to take our changes and then store it in a remote server. So a remote server where we can actually host our project. The most popular Git providers out there are GitHub by Microsoft. Then we have Bitbucket and AWS Code Commit. And um, obviously we have others, but these are one of the most popular ones out there. Now, how do we take the changes from our local machine to the remote server? So the way we do it is by simply issuing the git push command. So now when we take the changes from our local machine, we push it to a remote server. If our computer crashes or we have any issues with our computer, then the changes are in the remote server. And what's really great about this is that now you can work and collaborate with people all around the world. So let's say that we have Josh from the United Kingdom. So Josh has some changes that he wants to push to the remote server. So it issues a git push. And then those changes now from his laptop, they go into this remote server. And then let's say that we have Mariam from Egypt. And now Mariam can actually get those changes by simply saying git pull. And basically now Mariam and Josh, they can basically work together on a project, even though they live different parts of the world. And this is why git is really powerful. In terms of installing Git in your machine, it's really straightforward. Whether you are on Mac, Windows or Linux, I'm going to leave this link right here where you can read about it. And basically they have the guides for installing on Windows, on Mac, as well as on uh, Linux right here. So the installation, it's really straightforward. And because I'm on a Mac, this is what I need to follow right here. Now, for Mac users, the best way for you to install is using Homebrew. So you say brew, install, and then git right here. If you're on Windows, what I suggest you to do is right here, I want you to use git bash. So git bash. So basically what git bash allows you to do is basically to have the exact same commands that I have. So you can, for example, so if I uh, make this bigger, let's see on the screenshot right here, you can have the same experience right here. They say that it provides a bash emulation used to run git from the command line. So make sure that you install git bash or you can install commander. So commander is another great tool. So C M D E R. It's a great tool. Um, to get basically the exact same thing. So I'm not going to install uh, neither Commander or Git Bash because I'm on a Mac, but if you're on Windows, go ahead and install those. And I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video.
for this course, we're not going to be using the graphical user interface client or GUI client to interact with Git. And that's because I want to teach you Git the right way. So we're going to be using the black screen or the terminal or command line if you are on Windows. Now, luckily for you, I do have a course specifically on the terminal and knowing how to use Vim, uh, Bash, ZSH, and all of that good stuff. So what I would say is if you're not confident using the terminal or command line, then definitely take the terminal Vim and Bash Essentials course first, and then you can actually um, have a full picture of all the commands that I'm gonna be showing you in this course. However, I'm gonna make things super nice and easy for you to follow. So even though if you don't have much experience using the terminal command line, you can follow this course, and if there is a command that you don't understand, you can pretty much just rewatch the video again and then see whether uh, it makes sense. But as I said, if you have any questions, join the community, ask us questions there. And also I would advise you to take the um, course on using the terminal Vim and uh, Bash. Because most of the times, the best way for using Git is through the terminal command line because it's much quicker and everything that these GUI clients gives you, you can actually do it through your terminal and command line much quicker. And as you become more experienced, you realize that you will not use um, these GUI clients uh, that often. So this is why I'm teaching you the right way because I want you to learn in the long term so that you become a badass developer. Once you have Git installed, the way you verify whether you have successfully installed Git or not is by opening the terminal or command line. So if you are on Mac OS, go ahead and search for terminal and that should give you a black screen like my one or actually a white screen, but I'm actually using iTerm right here. So it provides a better shell experience and if you're on Windows, go ahead and search for CMD. So CMD. And if you have installed Git Bash, so just search for Git and then Bash. Just like that. So once you have things installed, go ahead and open up your terminal or command line. And by the way, if you want to learn how to use the terminal command line, um, go ahead and check my website where I've got this course right here. So terminal and Vim essentials. And I pretty much teach everything that you need to know in order to be so comfortable with bash Vim. Um, and basically, um, everything that we're going to do here, basically, if you take this course, everything will be so much easier for you. And also knowing how to use terminal Vim and bash, it's a must for software engineers. So in here, the way that we check whether Git has been installed, we type Git and then dash dash and then version. So if this comes back with a version, then you are good to go. So if you are stuck, go ahead and let me know, um, send a message or on the Facebook group or Discord, and we're going to help you. But the installation process should be really, really straightforward. So also you can type git and then dash dash and then help, enter. And you can see that we have, uh, basically my font is actually quite big. So let me actually make this smaller, just like that. And then just make it a little bit bigger now. So let's see, something like this. And then put it in the middle. Oops, <laughs> not full screen. Uh, let me just put it in the middle, just like that. And if I type git dash dash help, you can see that now you can see much better. So basically you can see that it's giving you a bunch of commands right here. And we're going to learn um, how to use these commands in a second. But this just ensures that I have successfully installed Git. And by the way, I've just pressed, so basically right here, I've just pressed control, so control plus and then L. 
to clear the screen. So control L, clear the screen for me, control C, control L. There we go. So again, if you are lacking experience on how to use the terminal, go ahead and enroll to this course right here. Next, let me go ahead and teach you how to configure Git. The first thing that we need to do is to configure Git so that we have the right information about ourselves. So the first thing that I want you to do is to type Git and then config and then dash dash global and then user dot and then name. And here, go ahead and type your name. So for me, it will be Amigos code and then enter. And also I want to write the email. So here, get config dash dash global user dot email. And then the email will be hello at amigoscode.com. Enter. Now the last thing that I want to do is to say git and then config dash dash and then global and then color dot UI and then say auto. This enables command line coloring output. So enter and there we go. So now if I clear the screen and then type git and then config and then press enter, you can see that we have, so if I scroll up, so in here we have a couple of options. So we have dash and then L for uh, list all or dash dash list, or we can also edit, right? So we can edit the information that we've just added. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen. So control L, and then I'm going to say, the exact same thing and then say dash and then L enter. And you can see that this was the configuration. So color UI equals to auto user dot email. This is my email and user dot name. And right here, this is Amigos code. And this one right here, you don't have to worry about. Uh, this was actually added by default by my operating system. And there we go. So now we have successfully configured Git. Let me just press Q to come out of this. And there we go. Right. So remember I said that we have the working directory. And this is where we have a couple of files. So it could be CSS, JavaScript, HTML, and many others. And all of this is in our local machine. So let's go ahead and create the working directory and then have a couple of files and then tell that the working directory should be a Git repository. And in Git, a repository is a collection of various different versions of a project. That's simply what it is. So let's go ahead and open up the uh, shell. So right here. And what I want to do is I could actually go ahead and create a new folder. And then here I could say uh, learning and then dash and then git. And then if I CD into desktop and then if I do an LS, you can see that we have the folder right here, but this is too long winded. So we should actually try and create things from the terminal. So here I'm going to say make and then dir and then learning and then dash and then git. There we go. And Basically, if I now ls, you should see that we have the exact same folder here. Now, what I'm going to do is within this terminal, within this shell, we're going to cd, so change directory into learning and then git. And I'm going to press control L and then ls. And you can see that this is empty, right? So right here, we have no files inside. Now, how? do we tell that the working directory is a Git repository? So basically we have to initialize our directory. So this is our working directory and we want this to be a Git repository. The way that we do it is simply say Git and then init and then dot. Enter. 
and now check this out so you can see that uh, I actually have a plugin and you can see that it's basically things have changed in here and um, it's telling me master I want to explain this in a second but now you can see that it says initialized empty git repository in and then this is the path right here and you can see that we have this dot git folder so basically in our local machine now we can start to issue git commands so we can say git and then add or git commit so on and so forth now what is interesting here is that if we want to work on an existing project we don't issue the git init so git init is mainly for brand new projects so here we are creating a brand new project so if i type ls dash a you can see that i have this dot git folder so what i want to do is first let's say uh, rm and then dash rf oops r and then f and then dot and then git so i want to delete that folder and you can see that now uh, i don't have no longer basically um this is telling me that i'm actually inside of a git repository right so now if i clear the screen for a second if i type git and then add you can see that it says not a git repository now if i say git init and then dot so dot means the current directory now you can see that it has initialized the repository i can say git and then add and you can see that nothing specified nothing added maybe you wanted to say git add dot so basically now it's recognizing that we are inside of a git repository which means that we can start issuing some git commands this is how you initialize a git repository right inside of this folder so learning git let's go ahead and create a couple of files so we're going to create a file called index.html we also want to create an index.nnjs and we also want to create a, let's say that this is i don't know the naming convention for css but main.css so now we have three files in there. So if I ls, you can see that we have three files. So index.html, index.js, and main.css. So basically these three files. So now I can add these files to the staging area so that I can create a commit. So in here, the command I want to teach you is, so let me make this a little bit smaller so we have a little bit more room to play with and bigger just like that. So now you see everything. So if I clear the screen, so now what I want to say is git and then status. So this is the first command that you have learned here. So get status gives us the status of the changes that we have made so here you can see that we have on branch master i'm going to teach about branches in a second no commits yet and then we have untracked files so here you can see that we have index.html index.js main.css and then it says that nothing added to commit but untracked files present use git add to track so basically in here so we have these files and we want to say git add to the staging area so now i can say git and then add and let's add index dot html enter and let me clear the screen once more and then run git status and check this out so now you can see that um, the status is a little bit different but we have now changes to be committed 
So now this is inside of the staging area and we can commit this. So if you want to unstage here, it says git rm. So git rm dash dash and then cached and then index.html. Enter and I can now say git and then status again. There we go. And you can see that it's back to normal. Now I could say git add and then index.html and then git add index.js and oops, uh, I've missed a D in there. So there we go. And you can see that uh, if I do a git status, I have two files. So and basically you saw that I had to issue two git add commands. But what I can do is say git and then add and then I can say dot. So dot means add all the files from this current directory downwards from this current directory downwards. So if I press enter and then git status, you can see that it added main.css. Now let me go ahead and actually say git and then rm dash dash and then cached dot enter and I actually need to say uh, dash R, so it's fine. There we go. So basically had to do it recursively. So it removed all of those files from the staging area. And if I do a git and then status, you can see that now nothing is being tracked. So now I can say git and then add and then dot. You can see that all of these files now git status have been staged. So it's really nice. Now what I want to do is let's actually reverse all of this again. So rm, so git rm dash r cached and then dot. And what I want to do is I want to make an endure. And then I want to say test. And I want to cd into test. And inside of test, I'm going to say main. Oh, actually, let's create a file. So I want to say touch and then test.js. So now have a look. If I do a git and then status, so you can see that it says right within. So if I do an ls first, I just want to show you that we have test.js. But it says that we have four files which are untracked. So what I want to do is I'm going to say git and then add. So remember I said git add adds from the current directory downwards. So currently I'm inside of test, right? And inside of test, I have test.js. So if I press enter and let me clear the screen once more. And then if I do now git and then status, you can see that I've only added the test.js because I'm inside of the folder test, right? So basically you can see dot dot. So it's not going back a folder and then add these files. So if you want to add every single file, you say git and then add and then dash and then a capital A. Enter. And now if I say git and then status, and you can see that now all of these files have been added. So I usually use git and then add dot. So I know exactly what I'm adding into the staging area. So, so right now we've learned about git add and how to add things to the staging area, also how to remove things from the staging area. Next, let's learn about the git commit command. So let's learn about git commit. So 
I said previously that a git commit or a commit is a safe point. So let's say that you build a feature or you write some code and then you get to a point where you say, right, this now um, can be committed. So this is actually a safe point before I start implementing another feature. So let's learn how to create one, two, and basically the commits, you can have as many commits you want. So right here, let me go back and in here. So remember we added, so um, if I do git status, you can see that we have all of these files right here, all of these files in the staging area. So also I'm inside of test folder and what I'm going to do is I always like to be at the root. So CD dot dot and there we go. So right now we have these three files inside of the staging area and we want to create one commit for all of these three files. So the way we do it is say git and then commit and then dash and then M. So here I'm going to say boot and then strap and then project. If I press enter, you can see that four files changed, zero insertions and zero deletions. And you can see that we have a create mode and the files in here. So now if I type git and then status, you can see that we have nothing to commit. And this is because we took the files from the staging area and then we created a safe point in here. So how do we see the changes that we have committed? Well, we can do it in a couple of ways. So in here, let me clear this. We can say git and then log, enter and have a look. So here we have the commit hash and this we'll learn about later but here this is master again later we will learn about this and then we have the author when we configured git so we added the username and email and then the date and then this is the commit message so we only have one commit message but if you want to see the changes that went into the actual commit is as follows I'm going to take this hash. So I'm going to copy this hash, Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. I'm going to press Q and then I'm going to say Git and then Show and then paste the hash just like that and then Enter and check this out. So you can see that we have the, basically we have the hash again, the author, date, the message, but here we have the diff. So we have a new file. This was the index.html. We have the index.js, main.css, and then we have the test, forward slash test.js. So you see that these were the files that went into uh, this commit. So now if I press Q, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically say vi and then I'm going to open, let's say that we want to open index dot and then JS. And here I'm going to press I console dot log and then hello git and then end out with semicolon, press escape column and then WQ. So basically I've just modify the index.js. So if I do cat and then index.js, you can see that we have console.log and then hello git. And you can also open this file with your favorite text editor and then just add this bit of information here. So let's say git and then status. You can see that we've modified index.js and what I want to do here is I'm going to say git and then diff. Enter and check this out. So here it's saying that the diff 
of what I have changed is I've added a line. So here, so get diff gives you the difference between what you have in the current working directory and what has been committed. So let me press Q there. And now I'm going to say git and then add dot git status. You can see that we have staged this index.js file. And now let's create a commit. So git commit dash and then M and then added console dot log. So when you have your messages, make sure that the messages represent the actual change that you have made because the messages, they must be readable to other developers. So here, press enter. And there we go. So you see that one file changed plus one insertion. Now, if I click the screen, say git and then log, we have two commits. So check this out. So we have the latest commit, which is added console.log. And then we have the initial commit bootstrap project. So if I grab the hash from the latest commit and then press Q, git and then show, enter and check this out. We actually get what has changed. So before we didn't have any pluses here because we added empty files. So if I was to remove as well, you would see the entire history of this file. So when you remove something, it's actually red. So if I press Q and then if I say vi index.js and let's just delete scape column WQ. And if I do a git and then diff, check this out. This is now red because I have deleted this line. So there you have it. And if I do a git status, you can see that we modified index.js. What I'm going to do is actually say I want to discard the changes. So to discard, I'm going to say git and then restore and then index.js. Enter. And if I do a git status, there we go. Nothing to commit. If I do git and then diff, nothing has changed. There you have it. You've learned about git commit, how to see commits using git log and how to see the differences between your working directory and what has been committed. Let's go ahead together and change the main.css. So ls, you can see that we have the main CSS file in here and currently it's empty. So here I'm going to open the file with vi and then I'm going to say main dot and then CSS. And in here, I'm going to press I for insert and I'm going to say body. And for now, this will be an empty body right here. And I'm going to press escape and then column and then W key to save the changes. Now, if I do a git status, you can see that we've modified main.css. Let's add main.css. So git add and then dot. Now let's go ahead and commit. So I'm going to say git and then commit and then dash M for message. And right here, let me simply say some garbage message. You can type literally anything. So I'm going to press enter and you can see that one file change, three insertions. That's because we had three lines. So now go ahead and type git and I've just pressed control and then L to clear the screen. Um, and now let's go ahead and type git log. So here you can see that we have this commit. So this was the latest commit. And this was the, the message, right? So this message really doesn't make sense. And remember, I said that the message should have meaning behind it, right? Because someone will actually look at this. And if they don't understand what your change is about, 
then it becomes a little bit more difficult. So the best practice is to have meaningful commit messages. So let's say that we want to amend this commit right here. So I'm going to press Q and now I'm going to say git commit and then dash dash amend. And then space dash and then M for message. And now here I can say added and then body in main.css. So this message now makes more sense. And if I press enter, you can see that now this has been updated. And if I now do a git and then log, there we go, enter and check this out, added body and then empty curly brackets in main.css. So this message now makes more sense. So there you have it. This is how you amend a git commit message. Again, make sure that your commit messages are well descriptive enough. So far in our local machine, we have a working directory with three files. So the problem that we have here is that if anything happens to our computer, whether uh, the computer breaks or we have a virus or we lose access to our computer, then we lose the project. So we can't have access to the project. So this is where we have the remote server. So we want to store the project somewhere where we can host Git projects. So the way we do it is by using the git push command, which you'll see in a second. But what this does, it takes a copy from your local machine and then it stores it into the remote server. Now, remember I said that we have GitHub, we have code commit, we have Bitbucket, but for this course, we're going to use GitHub for storing our Git project. So in a nutshell, GitHub is a platform for hosting and collaborating on Git repositories. So the idea is that we have a repository or a repo hosted by GitHub. And you often hear developers say a GitHub repo or a Git repository. So basically it's a repository which is hosted on GitHub. And the cool thing about it is that we can then have people working and contributing to the same repository from all around the world. GitHub is awesome and it's my favorite platform for hosting Git projects. So what I want you to do is to navigate to github.com and right here you can see that they have this awesome landing page. So GitHub is so popular and you can see from the stats here, they have 56 plus million developers, 3 million organizations, 100 plus million repositories, and the numbers are just insane. This is where the world of open source does live. So everyone is using GitHub and you should also use it. So in terms of pricing, so right here, if you're a student, you actually get some perks. So you can click on it. You can see that you have the a student developer pack uh, for teachers as well, classrooms, so on and so forth. Uh, but if I go back and then right here, if I click on pricing again, I can compare pricing or actually plans. And here you can see that it's actually free right here. And you can see that you can have uh, unlimited private and public repositories. Uh, you can have 2000 minutes of uh, GitHub Actions. And if you want to learn more about GitHub Actions, go ahead and check my website where I've got a course on GitHub Actions. So this is really awesome when it comes uh, to CI, CD. But most of the time you'll have a free one. And then if you are working in a small team, you know, $4 a month, it's peanuts. And if you're working in a company, they're most likely using the enterprise or the GitHub one plan. So yeah, so you can see uh, lots of people using it. And right here, you can also compare the actual uh, plans. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and sign up and create an account. And then I'll walk you through 
how to create a repository and then take our repository that we have created in our local machine and then host it in GitHub. Right, so once you have the account up and running, you should see a page like this. Obviously, if it's a brand new account, it might not have all of this as mine, but this is because my one has quite some activity and a lot of people are following me, so you can see here. And I also have uh, some repositories right here. So for you, all of this might be empty. So the first thing that I want you to do is to create a repository. So click on new, and then here, the owner. So this will be your username and then the repository name. So here I'm going to say learning dash and then get. Then we can have a description, it's optional. And then here we can have the repository to be public or private. So if you want to collaborate with people and you really don't care about the source code and anyone can can have a look at it then you can use public or if your application is private and you want to control who has access to it then you choose private so here i'm going to choose public because i want everyone to have a look at this repository and then here we have a couple of options here so initialize this repository with and then it says skip this step if you are importing an existing repository so what we are doing is importing a repository that we have created locally. So here I'm going to say create and then repository. And there we go. So now you can see that we have this quick setup and basically um, it's given us some options here. But what I want to show you is, so remember in here we added this git in it before. So if I zoom in here. So git init, remember, and then we added um, some changes here. So commit and then minus M, you've learned about minus M. And then here, git branch, and I'm going to explain branches in a second. And then it says that this is how you push the repository. So that's literally about it. So in our case, we don't have to do none of this because we already have uh, the repository set up. So all we want to do is just push. So push an existing repository from the command line. So here we need to do this. And then we have to say git, git branch and then M and then push dash U. And this is pretty much what we have to do. So in our local machine, we have our files and we want to push. So we want to push the changes and all that's going to do is take our files and then put it inside of our um, repository that we have just created inside GitHub. So in order for us to be able to push first, we're going to face an issue, but let me show you first um, what we need to do. So in here, let's go ahead and grab this command here. So command C. And then I'm going to go back to my terminal and here I'm going to paste. So inside of learning dash git, paste that. And what I'm saying is git remote add origin. So the remote for this branch is this path. So Amigos code. So this is the username and then learning git is the repository. So I'm going to press enter. There we go. That worked. Let me go back. And here is telling me to say git branch and then minus M and then main. So I'm going to grab this. And right here, the branch that we are currently in is master. So GitHub, they recently changed the main branch to be called main instead of master. So if I type uh, git and then branch, you can see that master is the branch. So is this one right here. Now they recently change so that the main, so here, the main is the main branch. So a branch called main is the main branch. So let's go ahead and paste that command. Oops, not that one. And let's grab this second one here and then paste. 
there we go and you can see that now we have changed from master to main there we go from master to main and all we have to do is just say git push dash u and then origin main so if i paste this now i want you to be aware that this will fail so you can see that it says could not read from remote repository please make sure that you have the correct rights and the repository exists so next let's go ahead and configure our github account so that we can push to our remote repository so we tried to push to origin main and we got denied so what we need to do is so if i make this a little bit smaller so what we have to do is to configure the ssh keys in order for us to push to this repository so in here go ahead and you should see that we have you have your logo or avatar in here so click on it and then go to settings and in here you should see ssh and gpg keys so what we have to do is to basically generate a private and public key and then upload the public key in our account and then with our private key we can push to this repository so in here you see that it says there are no ssh keys associated with this account and we can check the guides on how to generate them so go ahead and click on this link and right here the instructions are very straightforward so basically um if i scroll down so in here you can see that generate a new ssh key right so let's click on it and then we have this page where we have installation process for both mac windows and linux so for windows users so in here make sure that you are using um, git bash or a commander as i said before so here open git bash so either one of those and then you can follow these instructions here so here i'm on a mac i'm gonna basically just open the terminal this is already open i'm gonna grab this command so basically i'm just gonna follow all these steps so it should be really straightforward so i'm gonna paste this and then change this to my email so here let's just say um hello at amigos and then code.com and then press enter and right here i'm going to leave the default place where it's going to store the key now we are prompted to enter a passphrase so here i'm going to skip this i'm going to press enter for no passphrase and you are more than welcome to add a passphrase i'm going to press enter and then again enter and there we go so let me go back to the instructions again and in here this is what we've done and now what we need to do is to basically add your ssh key so here what we're going to do is just take this i'm going to take this and then paste that and then here so basically inside of dot ssh config we need to add this so let me go ahead and simply say vi let me clear the screen so vi and then under uh, tilde and then dot ssh and then config and inside i'm going to press i for insert and then paste that and then press escape and then column wq there we go and finally what we need to do is just grab this line and basically i'm just following step by step with you so that you see everything working so there we go so now this has been added so what we're going to do now is add the ssh key to your github account so let me just click on this link and it just says pb copy so i'm going to run this command and this will copy the key to the to our buffer so let me actually show you so if i um, say cat 
and then tilde dot and then SSH and then ID. So that's the name of the key and then dot and then pub enter. And there we go. You can see that this is the key that we need to upload. So obviously I could copy or I could run. Oops, I've just pasted the wrong thing there. But if I grab this, so here, if I cancel out of this and then run PB copy, enter. Now, if I press command V, you can see that it's on my buffer. So I'm going to take that and then it says go to your YouTube account and then you can add that uh, within the SSH key. So basically uh, this SSH keys and then you paste the key in here. So here, let me go back to GitHub. And again, under SSH keys, so we're going to add a new SSH key. And then here, let's just paste what we've just copied. There we go. And then add SSH key. Now for this, we need to add the password. There we go. Confirm. And done and dusted. So we are good to go. So now, Next, let's go ahead and try to push the repository again and see if it works. Up my terminal and in here, I'm going to press control C and then clear the screen. And remember before, so if I press the up arrow, so before, git push dash u origin main. And if I press enter, let's see if it works. And there we go. You can see that now it looks much better. And right here, you can see that we have to GitHub and the new branch and then main main, which means that if I go back to GitHub, so in here, and what we're going to do is so I'm going to click on this logo right here. And then repositories, we can see the list of repositories, we can search. So for us was learning, and then Git. so in here. And if I zoom out just a little bit, and there we go, you can see that we have our three files and this folder right here, which inside has the test.js. And this is really, really nice. And remember before we added these commit messages. So remember added body. And then uh, this when this was when we amended this commit and then added console.log, so on and so forth. So actually we've managed to take our files and then push them to GitHub. Now let's create another file. So I'm going to press escape and then go back. So here we're going to create another file and here I'm going to say VI and then I'm going to name this as main.go. So this is a uh, extension file for Golang and then press enter. And then here, let's just say, for example, let's just have uh, an insert here and I'm going to say funk and then main and there we go. So just an empty function in here. So now I'm going to save this. So escape and then column WQ. And if I do a git status, you can see that we have one uh, untracked file. And if I press control L, now I'm going to say git and then add. And then I could say uh, main.go or I could just say dot. Now I'm going to add a message. So I'm going to commit. Well, actually, let me just do a git status. So you see, there we go. New file, git, and then commit dash M and then main, or oh, actually added main dot go with empty main function. Cool. Now we've made the changes. So if I press uh, git log, so you can see that we have added main.go with empty main function and this change. So this change, it's only in our local machine. So in here, if I refresh this page, 
you can see that. So I can see the commits in here. So I'm going to click on it and you can see that there's no commits in here. So now what I want to do is say git and then push. So before we add dash u origin and then main. So we don't have to do this because we already pushed the local repository to GitHub. And now we can just remove all of this and then just say git push. So it, know, it knows what to do. There we go. So that's been pushed. And now if I refresh, check this out. You can see that we have added main.go with empty main function. If I click on this commit, you can see this was the change. And there you have it. So you've learned how to push from local machine to remote, where remote is GitHub. So we've learned how to take a copy of whatever files we have in our local machine and then using git push to copy them into GitHub. We also have the reverse, which is taking from Git, so whatever it's in GitHub, and then pulling the changes into our local machine. So currently what we have is we added a main.go file, we've pushed it into GitHub. So you can see four files in each side. So let's add a new file and then pull the changes to our local machine by using the git pull command. So if I navigate to GitHub and in here, you can see that this was the previous page that I was on. So I can click on this link right here, which takes me to the main page. What I want you to do is right here, you see where it says help people interested in this repository, understand your project by adding a readme. So let's go ahead and click on this file. And here, this is how we can document um, the purpose of this repository. So here, let's go ahead and simply say uh, learning how to use Git. Oh, actually, this repo was used to learn Git from, whoops, and then Amigos code and then delete that. And right now, if I scroll down, you can see that we can commit this new file. So basically these, uh, this is actually what's going to be added as the commit message and we can add a description. So all I'm gonna do is just commit the file. And there we go. So now you can see that we have a readme. This is the title, so learning Git. So we could change the title as well. Uh, and then this is what we um, said. So this repo was used to learn Git from Amigos code. So with readmes, you can have checkboxes, you can customize, make it beautiful, links, so on and so forth. But for now, let's just keep it simple. So now you can see that we have five commits. So if I click on it, you can see that we have a commit in here 30 seconds ago. And if I click on it, you see that this was the file added, right? So now in our local machine right here, so if I press control L, if I do a git and then log, you can see that we don't have that commit. And that's because we need to pull the changes from the remote server, i.e. GitHub. So to do that, we can say, Oh, actually, before I, I do that, so let me do an ls. You can see that we have these files. So index.html, CSS, uh, JS, main.go, and test folder. So now I'm going to do git and then pull. I'm going to bring the latest changes from remote. Enter. And there we go. So we actually have um, some hints right here, uh, but I'm going to ignore them. And right here, you can see that we have our read.md. So now I can do an ls, and let me clear the screen, 
and check this out. So we have the file right here. So we've brought the changes. So that was for a new file. So let's go back to Git. And in here, I'm going to go back to the main page. And then I'm going to open up main.go. And I'm going to click on edit. And by the way, you might not see these icons because and that's because I do have an extension that allows me to open um, from these IDEs. So here I'm going to edit the file. And let's say that, oh, actually not let's say, but I actually forgot. So let's say that we say a package and then main. Just like that. So this now is a valid Golang application. It doesn't do anything, but now having the package main is valid. So let me scroll down. And here I'm going to say added package main and then commit the changes. There we go. So if I zoom out a little bit and then go back and in here, you can see that we have six commits and added main. So added package main. So in here, so if I do a cat and then main.go, you can see that we don't have package main. But if I do a git pull and there we go. So if I clear the screen and then cat main.go, you can see that now we have package and then main. There you have it. This is how to use git pull. Let's learn about branches. So far, we have a couple of commits uh, that you have seen. For example, bootstrap project. This was the initial commit. Then we had the other one, which was to add the console.log. We add another one for the empty body tag in main.css. And we add another one for main.go and many other commits, right? So each commit, remember, I said it's identified by the hash. So those random numbers that you see, those are the hashes for each commit. Now, all of these commits here, they are inside of what we call a branch. So remember when we pushed the project from the local to the remote repository on GitHub, we added this main branch. And also main branch you'll see often on the internet called as the master branch. So GitHub, they recently changed the uh, master branch to be named as main, but main and master branch, they are basically the same thing. So these branches, they are the default branches. And what is a branch in a nutshell? So a branch represents an independent line of development. So the cool thing here is that let's take the main branch. And now if you want to work, for example, with me on this same project, what you would do in best practices is create a branch named feature A. You'd start development, then committing a couple of commits. So let's say that you commit, uh, or oh, actually you implemented the bubble sort, then maybe you add a button for the screen uh, and many other commits. Then once you are done with the implementation, what you would do is merge, you would merge your branch back into the main branch. And again, the main branch or master branch is the default branch. So this is where the representation of the final snapshot or the final code is. Next, let me go ahead and show you how to create a branch. So in here, you can see that my terminal actually tells me that I'm inside of the main branch. So you might not see this depending whether you have the plugin or not that I'm using. And again, if you want to learn how to use the terminal, customizing all of this, go ahead and check my course on uh, terminal bash shell and all of that good stuff. So if you want to know the branch that you are on, type git 
and then branch. And right here, you can see that it tells me that I'm inside of the main branch. If you want to know the list of branches in the remote server, so right, because this command here only lists the branches in our local machine, type git branch dash r for remote. And you can see that we have origin and then main. If I quit out of this, we could also check all branches. So git and then branch dash a. And you can see that we have main and then also remotes and then origin and then main. So this is the one on GitHub. If I press Q, there we go. Now, if you want to create a new branch and when you create a new branch, you're basically taking a copy of the existing branch and then you can make any changes in your branch without affecting main. So let's create a branch. So git and then branch and then feature dash a. So make sure to use uh, proper naming. Don't use like uh, special characters uh, nor spaces. Uh, usually you, you should use like dashes or underscores uh, and make sure that the branch name makes sense. So here I'm going to press enter. And now if I do a git and then branch dash a, you can see that we have feature a in here. So this is our branch. Now we created a branch, but if we make any changes really, we will be making changes in our main branch because we haven't switched branches. So to switch branches, we can say git and then check out and then feature a press enter. And you can see that we have a message switch to branch and then feature a if you want to switch back to the previous branch, git check out and then dash. So this will check out to the previous branch, which was main. So if I press enter, you can see that it has switched to the main branch. If I run the exact same command, I should go back to feature A. There we go. And that's it. So this is how you create branches. So let's go ahead and create a new file. So here we're going to say VI and then I'm going to say utils dot and then JS enter. And for now, this will just have a to do here. So to do implement utils, scape column WQ. And there we go. So now I'm going to say get status. You can see that we have uh, utils there. So git add dot git commit dash M and then uh, and then let me actually say just utils dot JS with to do and then enter and there we go. So now what we have is so if I do a git and then log, you can see that the last commit in the main branch was added package and then main. And then in here, in our new branch, you can see here, feature A, we added this new commit. So utils wait to do. So if I press Q, if I switch back to main, so git checkout and then main, or this, and then git log, you can see that we don't see that commit. And that's because it's in a different branch. So if I press Q, let's go back the feature a branch. There we go. Now this branch currently is not in GitHub. So if I show you so in here, so let's go to the main page of this repo. And then check this out. So here you can see that we have access to branches. If I click on it, you can see that we only have main, which is the default right here. And we can view all branches and fair enough. There's only one branch. Now, if I go back here for a second, and then if I want to push this branch to remote type, git and then push, and then this will give you a nice 
command that you can just take just like that and then paste it or you can simply so instead of that you can say git push and then dash u the same way that we've done with uh, the main branch enter and there we go so this now has created a new branch and you can see here new branch called feature a so if i go back to git and you can see that we have feature a right here so again if i now click in here on branches you can see that now we have this feature a so if i click on feature a you can see that this has basically the same thing right so this is the commit so utils js with to do and if i go back to the main branch the main branch does not have that commit as its late latest commit so six commits let me go once more and you can see that here we have seven commits and there you have it this is how to create branches commit to branches so on and so forth one last thing that i want to show you is let's go back to the main branch so git checkout and then main and then git checkout minus b and here what this does it creates a branch and then it checks out into that branch so before we did it in two steps so git branch and then we did a git checkout so here we're doing two steps so here i'm going to say to delete just like that and you can see that we switch to this branch so this is what the minus b does so now if i do a git branch dash a you can see that we have to delete right here and if we want to delete this branch so let's just git check out back to main we can say git and then branch dash d for delete and then the name of the branch that we want to delete so two and then delete enter and you can see that deleted branch to delete so this is everything about branches next let me go ahead and show you how you're going to merge your changes from this branch right here called feature a into main branch I just want to touch on branches for a second. So as you saw, we are using the main as our default branch. So as I've been saying through the slides, most of the times, or actually majority of the projects that you will see around, so existing projects, they will be using master as their default branch. It was until recently that GitHub decided to change the default branch to be named as main instead of master. But main and master, they are the exact same thing. So if you're working for a company or when you join a company, you will never push to the main branch or master branch directly. You will never push to the main branch or master branch directly what you will end up doing is creating a branch making some changes pushing that branch to remote so you don't lose your changes and then you raise a pull request so that someone can review your changes and make sure that they are sensible changes right so making sure that you have the right amount of tests uh, the logic is sensible and basically you're not doing anything that could cause an issue on the main system once it goes into the main or master branch. So let's go ahead and explore pull requests. Right, when it comes to merging two branches, it's best practice that you do it through a pull request. So in here, you see that we have this feature branch and then we have the main branch. Now I could go ahead and say git 
and then merge feature a just like that and that will take the changes from the feature a and then merge into main branch so i'm not going to do this in here because as i said we should do this through a pull request so if i go back to github and right here you see that we have this message right here which says we have recently um created this branch called feature a uh, and then it says compare and pull request so if i also go to pull requests and here i can see the same message and i can click on pull request and by the way if you don't see this message you can just go to pull request and then you can say right so you can pick the branch so feature a just like that and basically you can do this exact same thing so i can say create a pull request and then here i would give some description of uh, what the change is really about and i'm gonna leave it empty for now but it's usually best practice for you to have a description so that the person reviewing this change knows exactly what you're doing and then you can see the changes in here so obviously we just have one file but obviously we have one file with one tiny change but if you're working on a big project then you should see you know many files many deletions changes so on and so forth so now i'm going to create a pull request and there we go so now we have a pull request so this is very important so in here you can see that we can merge i'm not going to do, do it i'm not going to do it now but you can see that we have reviewers so in here reviewers so this is for example where you would choose a person which is working on the same project as you to check whether your changes are good to be merged into the main branch so obviously no one is here because i haven't invited um, anyone into this project but if you are working for a company then you should see um, reviewers that you can pick from then in here we have uh, actually a signee so this is yourself we have labels we can have uh, labels for example um, enhancement or a question um, let's say that this this was a bug for example right that we were fixing there we go we have this you can also add projects so project and milestone so this is about project management and then issues as well and also here checks so for example if you are using github actions you want to make sure that um, specific checks have to pass before you merge the pull request then you can do it so in here you see that we have this button and i can merge it in ideal scenarios someone would actually need to approve this change before you merge the pull request and all of this can be configured through settings in here so i'm just going to skip all of that and just say do you know what i think these changes are sensible so i'm just going to merge them so i'm going to confirm the merge and there we go now what i'm also going to do is delete this branch and you can always restore if you need it so now if i go to the main page or actually code in here you can see that it says amigos code merge pull request and now we have eight commits so if i click on commits you can see that this was the change so utils.js and then you can see that I've merged this branch. So if I click on either one of those, there we go. You can see the change that went in and we are good to go. So let me just go back in here. And if I go back to my terminal, so if I clear the screen and then do a git and then log, and here I'm gonna say dash dash one, and then line so this is a new uh, flag that you've that, that that you are learning enter so this basically um gives us a much better syntax so you can see that we actually don't see 
the changes that we've merged to main. And that's because we need to pull. So if I do a git and then pull, there we go. You can see that utils.js, one file's changed. And if I clear the screen, git log dash dash one line, there we go. So you can see that I do have the same thing that I saw on GitHub. So this is nice. And also I can go ahead and delete the feature A branch from my local machine. So I've actually deleted in, in the remote server, but I can also go ahead and delete. So git branch and then uh, dash D and then feature A. Enter and then git branch dash A and there we go. So this is pretty much how you should be merging your changes and pull requests. Right, let me walk you through your workflow when it comes to working with Git. So the first thing that you should always do is if you're working on a new feature, let's say that you are working on a new feature, then the first thing that you should do is pull the latest changes from master. So pull the changes from the remote uh, repository, right? Pull the latest changes from master down to your local repository or to your local machine. From that point, you create a new branch. So git checkout minus B and then the name of the branch. At that point, you then start working on a feature, a bunch of commits, so on and so forth, and off you go. Now, it's advisable, it's advisable for you to rebase your changes against master, especially if you have been working on this feature for, let's say a day or two, as you know, master will move on, right? So master will move on. So what you want to do is to bring the latest changes from master into your local machine, right? And when you rebase, you might or may not have conflicts. If you don't have conflicts, that is absolutely fine, right? So no issues there. But if you have conflicts, then you have to resolve all of those conflicts, right? So as I, as I um, told you about, if you have 10 commits, then you have to resolve the conflicts for each commit. So what is advisable for you to do is to squash all of your local commits first and then rebase master. So you squash your commits, right? And then in your, in your branch, you have one single commit. And then when you rebase, you say, right, so this is my commit. I'm gonna remove this commit so this action is actually called stash in Git. I'm going to stash my commit. I'm gonna put it aside, bring all the changes from master or main here, and then I'm gonna try and bring my commit back on top of it, right? So if you have one single commit, then you have to resolve the conflicts once and you're good to go. So then what you do is you push to remote and then you raise a pull request you have discussions with your peers, and if the changes are approved, then you merge your commit into the main or master branch. And that's pretty much what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, let's move on. Right, let's go ahead and create a new branch. So here I'm gonna say git and then branch and then feature and then dash x, y and then z or better we can say git and then check out minus b and then this will create and check out this branch. So now let's open up the index.html. So if I do an ls, you can see that we have index.html and currently if I do a cat and then index.html it's actually empty so there is nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is navigate to w3schools.com forward slash html 
and in here I'm gonna grab this HTML right here so you'll find this also in the description of this video so I'm gonna grab all of this and we could actually use VI to edit the file so I could say VI and then index.html but let me just open up VS code so you can see uh, things easily so right here I'm gonna open the folder and then I'm gonna navigate to desktop and inside of desktop we have learn and git and open so there you go now you can see that index.html is actually empty so let's paste all of that code right here and what I'm gonna do is the following so let me just remove all of this for now so the body so you saw that we have taken this right so we're going to basically have an empty body for now save that and we could actually uh, commit from here or from the terminal so let's say git add and then dot and then commit git commit dash m and then add some html and here i'm going to say git push so this branch now will be in our remote repository there we go so if i go back in here and then in here you can see that we have this branch now what i want to do is let's say that you so you will make some changes to this branch so let's say that you and i are working together on this exact same branch so now i'm going to pretend to be you so here i'm going to open up this branch right here and if i open up index or html you can see that it's empty the body is empty now what i'm going to do is i'm going to edit this file and then here i'm going to say inside of the body i'm going to paste oops not that but basically what i want to paste is so in here i want to grab this and then go back once more and then paste that in there we go so we have this is a heading and then this is a paragraph right so now i'm going to commit but let's say that this is actually you making these changes so there we go now in my remote branch i'm I, i'm not aware of what is happening right so in here you can see that for me this still empty right so one way i could do it is actually uh, pull the changes and then i would see the heading and paragraph but let's say that now so this is me now i'm going to basically in here i'm going to say this is a another paragraph so i've just saved that right so you can see that now we we actually have a conflict because you so you have made these changes i haven't pulled down those changes into my branch right and in the same place so line seven i've made some changes so now we are going to have some conflicts so let me actually show you so now in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to clear the screen so control l or clear there we go now i'm going to say git and then add and let's commit this so here uh let's say add and then oh actually added and then p one or actually another uh, p tag and then enter and this is what i'm going to do so now so if i say git and then push and now you can see that this actually failed so it says updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally so this is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same ref so basically you have pushed these changes i didn't pull and now i try to push my changes right so here so this is another paragraph and basically now i can't do it because i don't have those changes locally so next let's go ahead and pull those changes and see what's going to happen
Right, so as you see, we need to pull before we push our changes. So let's go ahead and say git and then pull. You can see that we have basically in here, so we have auto merging index.html because we both made changes in it. And then you can see that it has detected a conflict and then it's trying to merge. So meaning that it's trying to take my changes, take your changes and then uh, put those changes together, but it actually failed to do that. And it says fix conflicts and then commit the result. So here, what I'm going to do is open up VS code and check this out. So now we have this strange thing going on here. And in fact, let me actually show you that. So if I clear the screen in here, and then if I do a VI and then index or HTML, and in here you can see that we have the exact same thing. So this can be a little bit confusing, but let me explain. So this part right here, so head, and then this part right here. So these are our changes. So remember, locally, we added, this is another paragraph. We tried to push that, but we had a conflict. And the conflict that we have is that in remote, so in remote, and let me make this bigger right here. So in remote, so you made these changes, right? So this is a heading, this is a paragraph right here. So this is a heading, this is a paragraph. And this is the actual hash right here. So F88, and you can see that if I click on this number right here, so the commit, so this is the um, smaller version, but if I click on it, so in here, check this out. So you can see that commit, and then basically this is the exact same hash that we have. And if I copy that, go back, command F, command V, you can see that it's the exact same thing. So now we have to fix these conflicts before we can merge. And to do that, we basically remove these um, where things in here. So these uh, less than sign and then the head. And then basically we fix all of this and then push. So let me actually do it through VS Code. So in here, uh, you can see that VS Code is actually nice because it's telling me that, so here, incoming change right here. So this is what was made in the remote branch. So this was um, made and then the current, so this is the current change that we have. So this is another paragraph. So this is what, I, what, what I've just explained. So we can accept the current change, accept incoming change, both, and we can compare. So let me just show you that right here, if I delete that, so I'm going to delete that, and then I'm going to take this, right? So I'm going to cut this because I know that my paragraph has to come before, maybe it has to come before, or actually has to come after, or maybe before. But in this, in this case, I'm just going, I'm just going to add it after uh, this paragraph that you added. So now I can say S for save and there we go. So now we have fixed the conflicts. So now we have to stage and then we can push it. But let me just go back in a second. So I just want to go back in here because I want to show you that here. I could say, for example, accept both changes. So here, and you can see that it actually um, fixed that for me, right? But uh, I actually didn't want this in here. So I want it right after the uh, first paragraph. So this one here, and there we go. So let me save this and let me go to my terminal now. And we could do this through VS Code, but in here, let me just press column and then Q and then exclamation mark to exit. If I do a git and then status, in here we have unmerge paths. So both modified index or HTML. So what we need to do now is just say git and then add index or HTML or dot. So we can say dot as well. So everything 
and basically you can see that it's telling me that I need to add the file or files to mark resolution. So that's what we've done. So if I do a git and then status again, it says changes to be committed. So let's just say git commit minus M resolved conflict. And if I do a git status again, you can see that nothing to commit. And now let's say git and then push. And you can see that this time it works. So if I go back in here and go back here as well. And now if I refresh, you can see that we have our change in here. So this is how you merge conflicts. So obviously in our case, we only had one change, but if you have many conflicts, then you're going to have to resolve all of those changes manually, or you can use VS code, for example, to help you resolving these conflicts much faster. Right. Let's understand what rebase is. So if you're working on a branch, so you have a branch, right? So remember when you say git checkout, you should really be checking out from the main branch may have multiple commits, right? So now you are in a scenario where the main branch has moved on and you don't have the commits from the main or master branch, right? So what rebase does, it says, right, I'm going to bring all the changes from whatever branch that you want. I'm going to bring the changes, right? And the changes will be underneath your, your new branch, right? So basically it says, right, I'm going to take all of your commits away. I'm going to bring all the commits from master into your branch. And then I'm going to try and apply your changes on top of it. That's what rebase does. So let's go ahead and explore rebase in detail. Right. So to demonstrate the rebase functionality with Git, let me go ahead and in here. So remember we have this branch that we created. So this was feature and then X, Y, Z. So now let me go ahead and open up the main branch. So here, let's go to the main branch or master. And this is empty because we haven't merged our branch. So if I go back or in fact, let me just go to pull requests and you can see that uh, we have this branch that we haven't merged, right? So that's why in master, so main, so main. So let me actually go here so you can see. So here, so the main branch doesn't have those changes. So let's commit straight to master from here. And I want to show you something. So again, I don't advise you to do that uh, because you shouldn't really be committing to master directly and also using GitHub. But for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and do it. So here I'm going to open up index.html and let me open up my terminal. And in here, I'm going to clear and still in feature X, Y, Z, I'm going to say cat and then index.html. And here we're going to grab all of this in here. So also you can grab from VS code. So here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit from here. So let's say that we have um, another developer and he already went and made these changes, right? So he already made, um, you know, the HTML page and let's say that he added and then here I'm going to say first and then paragraph. And now I'm going to commit the changes. And there we go. So the main branch or the master branch contains already these changes, right? And in our branch, so if I uh, click in here, so this is main, let me open up again, you can see that first paragraph. So this is already in main, or the main branch. So in here, in our feature XYZ, if I click on it, 
and open up index.html, you can see that this contains an h1 and then two paragraphs. So in here, how do we go and say, right, we want to we want to take the latest changes from the main or master branch and then add our changes on top of it. So this is what rebase allows us to do. So here I can say git and then pull and then dash dash rebase or dash r and then origin and then main. So main is our main branch but often you'll see also this master, right? So the master branch, but in our case, we are using the uh, main branch as our default branch. So now if I press enter, you can see that it tried to bring the changes from main and then it tried to add our changes. But you can see that it says conflict and then merge conflict in index.html and then error could not apply and we need to resolve these conflicts manually. So again, we've learned about conflicts. So here, if I go back, so this now is familiar, right? So um, basically, this was already in main. So these were these changes were already in main. And then we have in here, so this actually, is our first commit to this branch. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we basically want to take whatever it's in main. So I'm going to say accept current change and save this. And let me delete that line there. And now in here, oh, actually in here, you can see that I can say stage changes, but let's do it through here. So this is better. So here I'm going to say git and then add. And then it says git rebase or actually git rebase and then continue once we resolve the um, conflicts. So git rebase dash dash continue. And here we basically have the uh, commit message. So I'm going to say, so I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to press escape column WQ. And there we go. So still, we can't do it because we have a, another conflict. So this is now the second commit. And right here, if I open up VS Code, you can see that this now is complaining because we added this is another paragraph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these manually. So here, like that. And this should be like that. Save. And we're going to add. So let me clear the screen. So we're going to add and then rebase dash dash continue. Escape WQ. And this now is the last conflict. So if I go back to VS Code, again, you can see that we basically are resolving all the commits that we have, right? Because remember, we added the H1 and then some paragraphs. So here I'm going to take this H1 because this was first and I'm going to paste it there and then I'm going to remove this one here. So basically I'm resolving the conflicts manually. There we go. Remove that as well and remove this as well and then indent that. And now if I save, you can see that this now is the complete picture. So this is a heading. This was the first paragraph from master. And then remember, this is another paragraph and this is a paragraph. And in fact, this has to go up, save again. And now we have fixed all the conflicts while bringing the current changes from master. So if I save this and then in here, I'm going to basically say git add and then rebase continue. And then I'm going to leave this message as is and then press WQ and there we go. So you can see that successfully rebased and updated, which means that now if I say git and then push, it says that our current branch is behind, 
But in fact, we know that we actually brought the changes from main, we fixed all the conflicts. So let me show you. So in here, so it thinks that basically it doesn't know the current change that main add, which was the initial paragraph. So the, the paragraph that said um, basically this paragraph right here, first paragraph. So this branch in remote feature X, Y, Z doesn't know anything about it, right? But we know that for fact, we actually brought those changes from main, we fixed all the conflicts, and basically we want to push these changes because we have rebased. In this case, what we have to do is say git push and then dash and then F for force. We can say dash dash force as well. So we're going to force push. You can see that this time it works. And now in here, if I refresh this, you can see that it says this is a heading and then first paragraph. So basically now we have all the changes from main in our feature dash X, Y, Z branch. So this is nice. Now what I'm going to do is so here I'm going to basically go to pull requests. Let's compare and pull and check this out. You can see that main did have these changes in here, which contain this first paragraph, but then we brought all of this, including the first paragraph, right? Because we've, because we rebased and then adding the H1 and then these extra P tags. Now I'm going to create the pull request and obviously we would leave a comment in here, create pull request. And there we go. So you can see uh, three commits. So add some HTML, another P tag, and then this was the update. So this was the actual uh, rebase. And we can see the files changed. So the same thing. And there you have it. So I'm actually not going to merge this. So I'm going to leave this for you to see exactly these changes. But as I said, this is probably one of the most confusing parts. And once you understand this, then the rest, as you saw throughout this course, is really straightforward. As you saw, we had to resolve a couple of commits in order to rebase properly. So usually what people tend to do is when they merge to master, so when they merge to master or the main branch, if you have, let's say three commits, right? If you have three commits on your, on your pull request, right? So you raise the pull request, you've got three commits. Then once you're ready to merge into the main or master branch, what you do is you squash all those commits into one commit and then you merge that into the main or master branch. That way we have to resolve only once. So usually also if you have like 10 commits, it's best for you to squash all of your commits and then perform a rebase. And then basically it's much easier instead of fixing all the conflicts one by one per commit. You also saw that because we rebased, the um, branch that we had remote wasn't aware of our rebase. So we had to force push because we fixed all of the conflicts, right? So that's why we had to force push. So this is actually one of the most confusing and probably most difficult things uh, that you're going to experience with Git. Everything else, it's a piece of cake as you've seen in this course. And if you have any questions on rebase, do let me know and I'll try to um, guide you to the right place so that you fully understand this topic. So far, we've been working with Git from our terminal, and this is the best way of you working with Git. But there are times when maybe you kind of want to gain a little bit more information and you don't know exactly all the commands, then there are times where you might use a GUI client. So there are many GUI clients out there, but the ones that I, I will mention in this course are GitHub Desktop. So this is the official one. 
uh, you can see, for example, here, you can see all the changes, all the history. You can see all the new changes nicely formatted in here, so on and so forth, even the branches and repositories. Then we also have source tree. So source tree is one which I have used in the past. Uh, but to be fair, I, I, I don't use uh, these clients because I tend to do everything from the terminal. And, you know, as you progress through your career as a software engineer, you will thank me later. And to be honest, most IDEs, they do have Git integration built in. For example, right here, I'm inside of VS Code. And you can see that, so I've just opened the uh, folder. So learning Git folder. And in here, let me open index.js. I'm going to say and, and then GitHub just like that and then save and if I make this a little bit bigger there we go and if you notice correctly so in here we have this blue line so if I click on it this is telling me that I have changed here so I have this new change so I've added and and then github and the cool thing here is that this also has reflected this is the git client built in within vs code so here you can see that i do have one change and if i click on it you can see right here it's actually showing me the diff so if i zoom out a little bit so there we go you can see the diff so this is a new change and if i cancel out of this and right here we can actually stage so stage changes, there we go, staged. And then here we can commit. So I can say added git and then hub. And I can say, right, I want to commit. There we go. And then here we have all options. So we can pull, we can push, we can stash. Uh, you haven't seen this. We can check out, we can clone, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and just push. There we go. And now if I go back to Git Hub. And then here, if I refresh. You can see that added and then GitHub. So this was from VS Code. I didn't even use the terminal. But as I said, you should try and use the command line as much as possible until you master Git. And then you will realize that you will not use Git clients as often. Inside of GitHub, you've seen that I do have these icons right here. And this is because I have the JetBrains Toolbox plugin and this is why you see uh, these um, icons right here for WebStorm, uh, IntelliJ, and Goland. So if you don't see this, it's because you don't have the plugins, but it's absolutely fine. But what I want to show you here is this button right here. So Git Pod. So click on it. And Git Pod is really nice. So basically, Gitpod is a coding dev environment for your GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket projects, which is really nice. So let's say that you don't have a fancy machine. You can work on your project by launching Gitpod, and this will open a web browser with VS Code in it, which is really nice. So if I log in with Git, so it's actually pulling a Docker image. And if you want to learn about Docker, I highly suggest you to check my website. Docker is awesome. So just give it a second there. And it even has a terminal, which is really nice. And there we go. So you can see that this is actually VS Code on the cloud, which is super nice, really, really nice. So I can zoom in in here. So let me just zoom in like that. And there we go. So you can basically set up the project. But basically, you can see all the files that we had 
in our local machine now they are running within git pod which is really nice and here this is my web browser this is chrome chrome running um vs code i can even open here i could make the changes so you could see that we still get the um, this line here saying that what was changed so git integration right within uh, which is super nice so if i save this actually you could see the changes here and yeah this is really nice and this is why one of the reasons github is so popular so it has lots of great tools for software development so go ahead and experiment with gitpod let me know what you think about it i think it's really awesome so again if you don't have like a fancy machine um, a not not so powerful machine then you can use basically this instead this all for now catch me in the next one as you start building lots of projects on github it's a good idea for you to keep your projects organized so this in fact can be used as your portfolio so in here you see that we've learned about git and we have a couple of files and then we have this read.md so basically in here we can have a bunch of information about what this project is about so this is actually um it has its own syntax so this link right here which you can find in the description of this video so you can see here for example you can have lists so you can have lists like that and then ordered lists uh, right here you can have um, these task lists or check boxes and right here we can have content attachments as well emojis so on and so forth so go ahead and check this page where you can learn more about the actual syntax for uh, working with then this md file but basically um, what I want to do actually show you that for example if I want to have a picture here I can say for example I can go to um, issues so this is one trick I'm gonna create a new issue and I'm gonna show you exactly what issues are but here I'm just gonna drag this picture right here so this is the course thumbnail and then I'm gonna grab this link copy that go back uh, actually in here and now I'm going to edit this readme and here I'm going to say that this repo was used to uh, basically if we want a h2 for example we could say like that so this now becomes an h2 and then here I can paste that and this now will have our image I can also say that this course is from uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then amigos code dot com forward slash courses forward slash git github right so i'm going to give some space there and now i'm going to commit the changes and you can say uh, update readme so on and so forth but basically here i'm going to commit directly and you can see that it becomes like that and you can see we have a link in here and then this is the h2 so this is really nice so in fact this should be um, git and git hub and then course so let's make it like that and then commit changes again and right here if i go back now you can see that this now it's much nicer right so here this is the description about this project so i highly recommend you to um you know take your time and craft this page because this is where for example if you apply for jobs this is where most people will end up checking your portfolio right so here you can see uh, as well the list of languages used html javascript go and then people sometimes go and check you know what kind of stuff that you are up to so it's always good practice to have all of this uh, organized right so the md file organized or the readme.md file organized so just to show you so as an example i like to highlight so if i go to amigoscore.com 
So here, uh, my courses, and then software testing. So we have Morello. So Morello has done a great job. So I like to show him as an example because if you check his GitHub account, you can see that basically uh, this is on a user and then this is the course that he took from my website. And then he, he added some description about it and then some tags and check this out. So here, have a look. So it has its index and then about and the architecture diagram and he even took his own scre screenshots, which is nice. Some screenshots again, some code example. You can also have code examples within your readme. So it's, this is like, this is like really nice, right? And he also explains the annotations and yeah. So if I actually go back and show his portfolio. So here you can see that he really took his time and he crafted all of this, right? So his name, what it does, where he's from, uh, some links, the LinkedIn profile, Twitter. So all of this, and you can see the list of all projects that he has been uh, contributing to. And also in here, have a look. So these are the con contributions in the last year. So all of this is important when you build your portfolio, right? So again, go ahead and explore uh, more and, you know, take your time to make your page spectacular because I want you to succeed as a software engineer. So the profile is actually um, customized in here. So your profile. So I've just went to my avatar and here I can edit my profile, right? And you can see my one is not as beautiful as Murillo, but I'm actually working on it as well. So yeah, so there you, there you go. So I just wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, building your own uh, portfolio with Git because it's really important and making sure that you have your, your projects really tidy up to showcase uh, to potential employers. Let's take some time to explore this page right here in detail and some of the things that you can do with GitHub, which I haven't explained uh, before. So here you saw that this is the main page, right? So this is where we have the uh, source code. And you saw that uh, we've crafted this readme file, so it's looking good. And maybe I should actually um, have some description here, for example. So I could actually put the my website link in here. So I can just say that and then I can say uh, Git, for example, and then GitHub. So these are like some some tags. So so GitHub. There we go, and save that, and there we go. So you can see that this has been updated. Now in here, so let's go through these tabs. So here issues. So this is how you keep track of all the issues that are present in your project. So I can create a new issue here. And I can say uh, fix, for example, um, and then button, for example, right? So this is a, a title and then I can leave descriptions of what is happening and then I can submit the issue, right? Before I can actually do that, we can actually uh, assign to someone, right? So we can have an, um, someone, otherwise it will be to yourself. We can add labels and projects. I'm going to show you projects in a second. So here, we can also assign this issue with a pull request. So you've learned about pull requests. So here I'm going to submit the issue. And now we have this issue right here. And then people can have discussions in here. So let me move to pull requests. So you've seen pull requests. So here we have one pull request uh, actions. So this is really interesting. Uh, this is mainly for continuous integration and deployment. So CI and CD, uh, go ahead and check my website. I also have a course on this coming out very soon. Uh, but yeah, but we're not going to touch too much on, on this, but this is really nice um, that GitHub offers. So GitHub actions. So I actually um, think that it's amazing what they've done here. Then we have projects. So projects. So here, let's go ahead and create a project. So here, for example, uh, you can say um, team, I actually have a team, team amigos, for example, 
and then here we can pick a project so basic kanban so this is um the style of your of your board so let me just say basic Kan uh, kanban and then we can have a description or i'm just going to say next and then from here check this out so here now we can have basically a list of cards or tickets and then as we complete these we can move them around right so let's say that um, in here for example um, basically you saw that here have a look we have the fix button so what I'm gonna do actually it say that this is part of um, this project so team amigos there we go and now if I refresh hopefully it should be somewhere here and it's not um, but basically we can move it right here so right so fix button and you can see that now it's right here uh, and also we can have the feature basically you can just move stuff to to do and then maybe someone has picked up this then they can move and then once it's done you can move it to done and basically this is so nice for you to you know track the progress of your project and do a little bit of project management as well right uh, and then we have wiki so this is mainly for documentation um, and then we have security so this is um, stuff to do with security about your project you can have uh, code scanning uh, de depend about alerts security advisories so if there is a, a vulnerability in your code base then basically all of this you can set up in order to let you know what is wrong with your code then we have insights so you can see basically who did what who, who created the pull request you can see con contributors um, and a bunch of cool information then we have settings so settings so this is where you actually um, customize a bunch of things but one thing that I want to do is in manage access if I put my password and then here I could actually invite you as a collaborator on this project so this is how you add people right so here you add by the username or full name or email so this is nice and then basically here um, basically um, we've got branches so I can actually rename here so remember we can go back to the master to be as the default branch but for now we we don't want that and we have webhooks we can configure webhooks notifications actions environments we can all we can store secrets as well so this is really nice uh, one thing which i want to show you is so in here so options so if i scroll down you see that we have the merge button so here this is uh when we can just say right so we just want to allow squash merging remember we talked about uh, squashing commits or allow merge commits right so let me just remove this so this is much better and you can see allow auto merge also github pages you can delete your project right here and yeah and then basically you can start so if you um would like to give me a star on this project i would appreciate we can see now i have one star and then forking so this is uh, when you want to basically take this project into your own account and then basically work independently from me right so you you've copied my project but then you have control of what you do with it and um yeah and then we have pull requests you've seen here issues as well marketplace so the marketplace right here this is where you, this is where you can see all the apps and actions available so go and explore and yeah, that's pretty much about it. Next, let me go ahead and uh, show you exactly how you can get involved with open source software. Right, in here, go ahead and click on explore. And I want you to see this. So here you can see that these are repositories all around GitHub. So there are thousands of these, if not millions of these repositories that you can explore. So here, if I click on topics, I can check the ones by topic. 
we can see, for example, uh, the ones on Java. So repositories on Java. And you can see that, have a look. So 122,000 stars. So this is quite interesting, right? So these are the trendy ones. So if I click on it, so I think this actually um, allows you to learn Java, but in Chinese maybe, uh, but it's quite popular. So in here, we have lots of these. And if I click on trending, you can see what is trending right now. So the cool thing here is with GitHub, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of these, these repositories that we can contribute. So in here, if I zoom in, you can see that built by and then a couple of people in here. So let's actually have a look at, for example, just pick any Python cheat sheet right here. And you can see that they have a readme. So we've learned about readme. And you can see that 10 people have contributed to this project right here. So you can go so if I scroll down. So here you can go and, um, you know, find any any project in any language that you are interested in, and then you can work on it, right? So they have guides on how you can contribute to a project. So if I click on this one called Trader, so here you can see that they have a nice readme with this awesome Giphy and right here. So remember issues. So these are the current issues. So some people have reported these issues and now they and, and now they have to go and fix these issues, right? So what you would do, for example, you'd go to a project, find the open issues, and then just pick any that you want and then start fixing those issues basically. And that's how you contribute to open source. So let me actually show you one which is really famous. So here I'm going to see if I can search here Kubernetes. So this one here, so the Kubernetes and check this out. So this one here, have a look how many contributors, 3000 people contributing to this, which is which is amazing, right? So this is the power of open source, a bunch of people from all around the world get together uh, and they, they build software, right? So here, you can see the readme. And if I scroll down, you can see that you can, you can actually support as well. And then this is some information about how you can contribute. So here they say how to contribute code and documentation, who to contact, etc. So this link right here. So there you have it, right? So if you have an interesting project, so let's say that you create a repository and within that repository, if it attracts a lot of people, then you can be the owner of that repository. And then who knows, you build the next awesome um, Facebook. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't open source Facebook, but uh, you know, a piece of software that it's useful for, um, you know, other developers to consume, right? For example, Kubernetes, which is really, really powerful, basically. Uh, yeah, so this is all. Actually, let me give them a star because I think what they're doing is amazing. So, and also let me watch this. Um, actually, I'm not going to watch for now. Uh, yeah, so there you have it. Oh, have a look. Almost a thousand pull requests. Look at the issues. Almost 2000, which is insane. And we can even see the projects. So we can see workloads. So you've seen this, right? So this one, this one looks like a little bit more polished. So you can see freezer backlog in progress done. And this is how they are keep tracking of what's been done in the project. So this is super nice. So there you have it. This is pretty much a quick overview of how you can get into open source software. And uh, also one thing that I'll, I'm, I'm going to mention is if I go back in here, you should really be checking the license. So all of these projects, they have a license. So here, and this license dictates what you can and cannot do. For example, here you can see the permissions for commercial use, modification, distribution, pattern use and private use. Uh, the limitations are uh, warranty, liability and trademark use, right? So you also need to have one of those in your project if you want to be clear of what people can and cannot do. So there you have it. This is a quick overview on how to 
contribute to open source and basically just go out there and explore the list of available projects that you think that you might be interested in. And uh, yeah, there are loads of projects available. It's all for now. Catch me on the next one. Right, I want to thank you so much for sticking around and learning Git and GitHub with me. I would love to know how you found this course and if there is anything that you're still not sure or understand, please do let me know. But what we've covered in this course is pretty much the essentials that you're going to be using throughout every single day, right? So Git has way a lot more commands. But in reality, you're not going to use all of those commands every single day. So what we've covered in this course is the essentials to get you going every single day. I'm going to leave some links where you can go and explore about other commands and also all of the commands that we've covered in this course. I'm going to leave the links down below so that you can reference. And if you want to go back, then you have uh, exactly what each command uh, does. So you have a description of what each command does. It was a pleasure teaching you. Um, also, uh, actually almost forgot. So if you haven't enrolled to the um, terminal bash and Veeam essentials course, go ahead and enroll. Literally go ahead and enroll because as a software engineer, you must know and be really comfortable when it comes to using the terminal. So go ahead and roll to that course. This is all for now, and I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.